So, so you did your list, right? Yep. How many of you, when you start doing your list, you start seeing the patterns inside you? You start seeing it? You seeing that you're actually a trance monkey and you're just robotically repeating some of this stuff? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So understanding this is, first of all, is, all right, so you know you're doing it. I see my patterns. You know, we have these patterns. We repeat them over and over again. And so that doesn't change it, you know, because you've, some people have been in therapy for years, and they can tell you every angle, why their father did it. They can tell you both sides of the story. They understand it. They can write a book about all the reasons why these kind of things happen. But yet, you still got it. You see it? I mean, you, some of you guys are probably, uh, at, you know, you could probably, you could probably do therapy on the therapist. You know, I had this friend of mine, she went to a therapist at 16 years old. She's suicidal, wanted to kill herself. Her parents took a therapist. Well, she went into the therapist, the therapist had problems, and she actually helped the therapist out. Yeah. Helped the therapist out, the therapist felt better, and when she walked her out to her parents, she said, she'll be fine. <laughs> right? And then she said, I still want to kill myself. So, you go figure. So, with Faster FT, we want you to be healthy. What good is a sick therapist? What good is an obese dietitian or a sick doctor? So our goal is, as a practitioner, you must work on yourself. It's mandatory that you get swaps, you get your head straightened up. That doesn't mean you're all going to be fixed. That means that you're transforming as you're working through this stuff because faster T works. If you operate from the thinking system, the belief system, and the processes and the techniques, it works. You know, of course, a lot of you coming here, the weekend seminar, it's different in training. It's totally different than what you see in YouTube. It's a different animal. It's a different way of looking at things. So, so here it is. You have this, this um, history. So how am I going to draw this on a piece of paper? So we have, you have the outcome right here. This is the outcome. And the outcome is built from your histories. So you have, you have memories, you have experiences, and you have belief systems. So here you have all these, these pieces, all right? Now you can see the patterns. You, here it is, you've got this current issue, and you can look back and you see everything's kind of connected, basically. All right? So the question is, how do you change this to where you're no longer doing it? And the way to do that is actually go to the structure in which you use to create this. The structure is basically... When do I do it? How do I do it? Who I've done it with? Who did I learn it from? And when's a good time? What it feels like inside me in order to do this. So you have a, a system, an emotional system. And we talk about how the unconscious mind works. It, it, takes, it takes two links and they link them together and they act like one. Which chocolate equals love. Which it doesn't. It equals diarrhea actually. But you don't know that. Anyway, so you take... <laughs> it doesn't? Listen. You're going to learn some things this next week that I know how to ruin your chocolate fetish. All right. What? I could do it right now. But I won't. Because some of you are not emotionally healthy enough. All right, so here it is. We have these links together. So here it is. You're creating this behavior, and you're going to move, and you're continue to create it. All right, so here we are. We got these two links together. Uh, abuse equals mama. All right, abuse, this is our love connection. Even though you wouldn't call it love, but you do it. Or, or you have a tendency to keep repeating because inside your mind, you have what you call the links that keep you in the system, which the links are attached to your whole structure of your life. You have a pattern, and this is all you have. This is all you know. And so what we do is we have currently the outcome, which is what you're still doing. Even though logically you know that all the stories are all there, you can see it, you can logically understand it, it doesn't necessarily fix it unless something happens. That is, first of all, you have to break the link. You have to break the link, and also you have to collapse the system, which is... Um, rewriting how you hold the memory. There's a, there's a, uh, so let, let's look at this here. You have, so you have this pattern. We're going to call this a pattern and how you do things, all right? 
And so this is what you're producing, the outcome. And okay, and let's say for example, you have a better way of doing things. So over here you have, I should do this, I should do this, I should, should do this, this and this. And this is your consciously knowing these are the right things to do. Logically, you should say nice things, do nice things, blah, 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 and you'll create a different outcome. But so here it is, you have option one, which is a deep-rooted, option two, a good option. And yet, if you have two options inside your head, bad memory and the desired outcome memory, which one wins the fight? Now, when we say bad, let me just remind you, bad is not bad, it's just what we know, okay? Just, we, we were judging it as bad, this is just an outcome, all it is. So we're going to call it bad because it's not so what we call beneficial. All right, so you have two memory, neurolo neurological information, you've got two sets of highways going on. One of them takes you into the things that doesn't make you feel good, one of them will create a better outcome in life. All right, so now you've got two outcomes. The weird thing is, when it comes to when the tire hits the road, when the food hits the mouth, whenever you're right there in a relationship into the situation, which one takes over? The one that has the most resources and emotional charge. You got that? So in order for us to create something completely different in our life, you've got these two polarity opposites. All right? In order for us to do this to where you have one outcome that's more desirable is you actually have to change neurologically this system. And the way to do that, you have to fire them off at the same time, which means you have to eliminate and destroy its system inside the head that's creating an outcome that's undesirable. And then we go inside the mind and we replay, create a new set of memories, which are better memories, a better outcome. Because there is a neuroplasticity of the mind. But if you have two outcomes and you're both sitting inside your head, the one that's most juicy, most r powerful, have more proofs behind it, will win the fight. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. well, so what we have to do is figure out how to neurologically change the system to get a better outcome. Now here's a problem with this. It's not a problem, it's just a natural thing, but it is a problem. All right? Let's say, let's say here it is. You want this. You don't want this. Uh, so, even though you want this, there's also what you call the side effect of this. All right. So it's 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 damned if I do, damned if I don't. All right. So here it is. Let's make up something. I want to be healthy. All right. I'm not healthy right now. I'm really miserable. All right. But I would like to be healthy. I would like to be healthy, and I like to do things. I'd like to go out and. You know, I'd like to get a job, or I'd like to do this, or I'd like to do that. But the problem is, is if you do this, there's what you call the fallback, or the, the negative side effect, which also will say, if I do this, this is what's going to happen. All right, perfect example. She called me on the phone, said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I hate being sick. Now, when anybody says, I hate being sick, I just realize that they're very passionate about being sick. When you hate something, you're definitely, you're a minister of this ministry of hatred. That means you want to get all your friends to be part of it too. You'll go share it, you'll, you'll, you, get, you create cards for it, you create groups because you hate it so much, you spend all your time with it. So I know when you say you hate something, my mind goes, she really loves this. I don't tell them that at the beginning. Because if I do, they will run like hell. I sneak it in a little bit when they're not looking. Sorry. <laughs> so you're saying that our conscious, is it possible our conscious mind can hate it, but our subconscious doesn't? Now explain what you just said. Hate what? Well, when we say we hate something, you're saying we actually love it. Well, see, consciously, you're not very smart. You understand that. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate a little bit more. <laughs> Elaborate just a little bit more. When you hear someone say they hate something, you go, oh, they love it. I don't tell them that. I just know that. Okay. So here it is. They say they hate it. Now, this is what people do. Uh, you, have, you ever, have you ever eaten habanero peppers? No. They're too hot. They're extremely hot. Matter of fact, you burn your eyes looking at them. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, you, you would not eat those, would you? No. Are you sure? 
Positive. Positive, 100 percent. So if you, so would you say you love them then or not? I hate them. Oh, you hate them, okay? But you, but this hate you say you really don't hate them because this is the weird thing about what people do is they say I hate being sick. And you know what they do? They spend all their time thinking about being sick. Okay. They spend a lot of time with sick people. They even go to the internet and learn how to be better sick. I mean, not better. They learn about the, the vast array of illness. Okay. So they spend all their time with their hatred. Got it. And matter of fact, they hate it so much, they will join groups about it. Okay. They will sit and watch animals being ripped apart and rotting and all this other stuff and try to get other people to share the horrible death of chickens. Mm -hmm. And they'll watch them. And each time they go eat a sandwich or they, they eat their veggie sandwich and their friend orders a chicken mm -hmm. sandwich, mm -hmm. they see dead, rotting animals in their head. Mm. All right. and that's, not all of them do it. Just yeah. the ones who are passionately hateful. Right. Okay? okay? So when we say they hate it, I realize they're heavily invested in it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't hate anything. If you do, you know what's happening? Mm -hmm. I'm emotionally invested. Okay. So, okay. so you think you hate it and you spend all your time with it and you're passionately put your emotions in it. You're actually investing in it. So you don't hate, you say you hate it, but you really love it. That's the point. Okay. If you hate something, you wouldn't be eating them all day long. Would you just sit around and eat habanero peppers? Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you're not, you probably don't even think about them, do you? No. Not even a part of your thinking process. Mm -hmm. But if you say, I hate illness, and you spend all your time with sick people, and you imagine sickness, and you go to places where sick people are, you're lying to yourself. Okay. You, you see the point? Yeah, I get it now. Okay, got it. I hope that makes sense. It's like, it's, it's how the weird part of our brain works. It says, you know, a fear will ha say something, but he beat you up, or a spider bit you, or someone merely drowned you, or punched you in the face. Then you start focusing on it because you don't want it to happen to you again. And while you're focusing on it, you're replaying it, and you're rehearsing it, and you're actually attracting it, looking for it, and trying to, you'll go find a job with it. You know, it's like, it's like Kathy, who's one of my, my great, she's helped me build faster of tea. All right, and, and um, so here it is. Kathy, I, I, I'm a massage therapist. I'm, I, I was doing EFT and didn't, you know, I was transitioning EFT and creating faster tea. And so she, um, she wanted a, a massage. She had a stiff neck, and I did a little tapping on her. And, and, um, and she said, I can't be massaged. I have, you know, people touch me. I try to get massaged. I can't get it done. I said, well, let me just try this other thing, which is the tapping thing. And so I tapped on I said, have you ever had any abuse, sexual, physical, emotional abuse? She said, yes, I was uh, sexually messed with at four years old by my stepfather, and it lasted years. That's why I can't people touch me. And I said, okay, well, we're just dressing memories. So I started dressing memories, and she's the one to help me create faster of tea, you know, because with EFT, even though I'm angry, I love to accept myself, this anger, this anger, this anger, and I realized, she says, it's not working on me. I said, well, what are you doing? This anger, this anger, this anger. I said, she's affirming anger. All right? So then I thought, well, and I let it go. She's the one I created, and I let it go, which tells her unconscious mind what we want. There's a presumed truth there. So I started building this, and so she was, she was, um, she, she, she said, I hate him so much. I hate him so much. Uh, when the garage door goes up, I know he's home. My husband. All right? Now, she drew this picture inside my head about how bad he was. Don't let him intimidate you when you meet him. He's six foot four, big guy, truck driver. And I'm thinking, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and you spend a lot of time with me. Hours at a time. Naked on the massage table and tapping, you know. So here it is. So I meet this guy, and he is such a wimp. He, he loves her. He would do everything for her. He's the greatest guy you would wish to have. She drew this horrible picture. But who was she talking about? Yeah. Now here's the bizarre part. You ready? Guess who he looks like. Yeah. Chills. Yeah. So we have a tendency to pick what we know and use what we know to torment who? We hate it so much I date you and I marry you. You see it? Yeah. This is the bizarreness of the mind. So here we are. We got, we got, do you have something important? 
I'm Evelyn. Nice to meet y'all. Um, so I hate being overweight. I hate the way I look. But when I start to lose the weight, I get the creepy guys, the jealous women, negative attention, mm -hmm. which is all of this over here. Mm -hmm. So by tapping out, you know, being vulnerable, being exposed, mm -hmm. going against the vow to protect myself, you know, when I tap on those and I change those, I can like who I am. And then once the defenses can drop and I can be vulnerable and still be safe, then I can heal that aspect. But in the meantime, I have this thick wall of protection. I can get in your face. Don't mess with me. You know, I can be strong. It's fake. It's fake. Yeah. It has worked up until this point. It has not worked at all. But not to the desired satisfaction. It has kept me very safe. Very safe, but I'm not achieving what I want. I'm not living but the life I want. Really, but the truth is, you're not really safe. You think you're safe. So, fix me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's even more to what she's saying here. Also, you have to realize... Since we're talking about food, there's, there's, food is passion, food is love, food is sex, food is pleasure, food is your best friend, food is, the, you know, all these pieces too. So here it is. The deal is, and the first thing she says is vulnerable. She has vulnerability. You know, it's like some people says, well, I just need to, uh, I need to have, what do they call this? We need boundaries. I need some boundaries. All right. We're going to draw these boundaries. And the problem with boundaries is who's stuck in the middle of the walls? You're still trapped. And if you cross my boundary, I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to get angry. Again, who's vulnerable? So for like with whatever her stories are, I don't know her stories, but if we were to go to, you know, here it is. This is the outcome. We got, we're overweight. We, we, we pretend like we're tough when we're really not tough. We're vulnerable. So how do you fix it? You go here. What happened? What did he do? What did they do? How many times the memories and the, the emotions and the person who did it? Because here's the weird part. The weird part is we have memories of these people. Whatever they did to you, you're now doing it to you, but you're doing it in a more sophisticated way, which is called I'm overweight, I'm angry, I'm alone, I'm single, I have no money, I have money, I'm puking. Whatever it is you do, you're still doing it. So it's like it's down if I do, down if I don't, I got the same problem. You see it? It's the same problem. So how do you get out of it? There's only one way. <coughs> change memory, change memory, change memory, change memory, change memory, change memory. Keep tapping, keep tapping. Go find it out. Attack it. Change, 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 change. And then as you, over time, what you're going to happen is that it starts to fade, disappear. You know, I say, you know, with the weight loss, do you know the toughest thing? Is do it right when the food hits the mouth. When the food hits the mouth. You know what, when you start, you start throwing good food away? When you, when you start, no, you can't have that, only half of that, the emotions start showing up. Because, you know, there's all kinds of stuff involved with this. So, so here's the problem. And I, ha I have to explain what we have to do. Down if I do, down if I don't. I hate being sick. I hate it. I hate it. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, she said. All right, so here it is. I'm working on her. I don't know. I, that's back when I didn't know as much as I do now. But it helped me understand things. So, so he says, okay, you hate being sick. What's the problem? I'm constipated. No, so you're full of shit, all right? <laughs> she said, I'm constipated, and I'm sick and tired of being sick. And so I started doing the art of change, basically, and started working. Guess what happens? Guess what her mother does for a living? She's a nurse. Mother's always gone. Guess who's home when she's sick? Mother. In her mind, she has a link here. Guess what? She gets to go see people who love her now. Doctors, nurses. You see it? Special attention. All right? Now we have this, and so, so here it is. So how are you going to fix this still? 
you know, if I lose weight. So I start dressing this. All of a sudden she says, well, if I, if I, and this is what pops up before I figure this piece out. She goes, well, if, I, if I'm well, I'll have to take care of myself. If I'm well, I'll have to be responsible. If I'm well, I don't get money from the government. If I'm well, who will love me? I said, what do you mean, who will love me? And then her mind pops into memory. Poo. Mom's a nurse. You see it? So then we look at this, okay. So here it is. The damned if I do, damn as I am. So what we have to do is you go to this, this stuff here and the bad parts and you clean all the memories up. All right? And you go here and you clean up all the memories and the pieces that are here. And what you have to do is you have to access a good resource. So we got bad, bad. So what we want to do is we access a good resource, a memory, maybe with your, with, you know, like you have good resources. You have like, I, I have good friends and I have a good relationship and I have this. And so you borrow this resource and you collapse this. You collapse this, you turn this into this, and then you use this to create a third option, which this is your third option. So you can, down if I do, down if I don't, create a new option. All right? And how you do that is you change all the bad memories. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. Two questions. Now this will be work. It makes sense when I think of memories that are generically bad, like an expression from my dad or, you know, something that feels negative that way. What about for individuals who suffer something extremely abusive? One of my questions is, when you go back and change that, is there somehow a disconnect in their mind between, are we... My concern would be, are we dismissive? I mean, if someone is raped, and you change, how do you change that? What exactly are you changing? Because the, the actual event happened. So what? It's not happening anymore. It's, it's not happening anymore, right. So you unrape yourself. Right. But you can still go back to and say it happened. It doesn't matter if it did or not. You're unraped. You're no longer raped. OK, so we're not dismissing what well, actually I, happened. Well, Listen, so what had happened? It right. happened. Right. You were born. You can't unborn yourself. Right. All right. But you can undo the rape. Right. Unless you like being raped. No. If you like to go back and revisit and be raped over and over again. No. Or if you like looking for rapists or like watching shows about rapists. No. no. Or you just like feeling being raped over the medical, by the medical community. <laughs> okay. So you'll find a new way. See, again, um, the rape memories are about you. You're the rapist now. Well, when you go, like when you're flipping something. Mm -hmm. Now, flipping, if you don't know, is re-imprinting. So, sometimes you send, like, you go through the whole thing and you send, like, your little self back or whatever. What are you doing in, I don't know. How so, to how do you fix it is what you're trying to say? Well, you're fixing it. But it, it's still something horrible that happened. It's not horrible. Okay. I guess You're I'm still holding on to horribleness. Okay. It's not horrible. You're not raped. Okay. Unless you like it. You're not raped anymore. You're not abused anymore. You're not a child anymore. Right. You're here now. Right. And that's the key. Yeah. Okay. And you're not in the war memories, you're none of those things. I don't know. Is it on? Yeah. Uh, question number one, uh, was, weight pe was people with weight issues, if they're on the healthiest diet ever, and nothing like they're saying works for them to drop the weight? Well, first of all, diets are the best way to gain weight. Mm -hmm. If you want to gain weight, go on a diet. You know, I mean, like more like lifestyle, they eat very healthy and so on. Well, listen, you can eat a ton of great healthy food and gain weight. There's a lot of people go on diets and they gain weight. Or they choose to eat healthy. But see, the problem is people eat because of emotions. They eat the same amount of plate of food that they'd normally eat when they were 17, and they're not 17, they're not as active, and they still eat the same amount and they get bigger. You can lose weight without ever dieting, without ever exercising. Okay. 
And um, what if the person saying that it's no good memories at all? What then make up some. Make up some. I believe there's good memories and bad memories. And I know we have resources. When you say good and bad, you mean not Happy. so help, not so positive, not so good, resourceful. They're all good. Things that make you feel good and things that make you feel bad. Well, some people like feeling bad. They even go to shops and buy things where people can beat them to make them feel bad. I get that. <laughs> That's not my question. <laughs> no, okay, I have, like you have a recipe. Yeah. Okay. And you have something you want to make. Mm -hmm. So then you draw. You can either draw the good ingredients or the bad the proper ingredients. Good, the proper right ingredients to make a cake, yeah. Okay. So how do you find out why you want to make that cake? Well, first cake? of all, we don't do why. We don't do why. Okay, right. Right. <laughs> so you shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> I, it just, you know, just talk more. No, I... I well, it's confusing, and it's like, you know how you're ha you have little epiphanies, and it's like, okay, but I know there's a lot of good things, so on some days, I can gather all the little good stuff, and I feel great, and then there's a, then something triggers. That's it. Jackpot. Trigger. And so then I draw the bad Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. It's the before, it's, different it's resources. It's the trigger. That's it's it. It's a trigger. Just a trigger. That's, see, this is the link that you need to pay attention to. Okay. It's the trigger. Okay. The trigger is an automatic hypnotic trance. Okay. That puts you in a state of mind, and it says, oh, I'm a piece of shit, or I'm horrible. Let's find more horrible things and make it better. Okay. It's that piece is it. The can trigger. You have, can you have triggers for good things? We have triggers for everything. Okay. So I mean, again, when you we this is how the brain works: automatic unconscious responses. Mm -hmm. That's all we do all day long. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm triggering the hell out of some of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> in positive way and negative way. Right. And I don't even know you really. Right. Right. So these are the little. These are billions of triggers. The deal is, if you tap, you get rid of the triggers. If you don't tap, you enjoy the trigger, and then you start being negative again. Mm -hmm. The point is, when the bell rings. Tap. Okay. Okay. That's it. And then, see, that's the why. That's the why you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Why is because you're just a freaking trans monkey. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Buy the t-shirt, get the tattoo, tap. Right. <laughs>